It's mailbag time here on the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz ready to answer all y'all's questions, and it's a friendly reminder. This video was filmed on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. We're going to hit some super chats here. First, let's go to LI Raider 312. With the draft over, what's a good package to get for Bradbury? I don't think that you need to trade for James Bradbury. And again, if it comes out later on that the Raiders did or that James Bradbury was released, just keep that in mind. I think the Giants release him, and then I know for a fact the Raiders will be one of the top teams interested in him, not only because of his connections with the team, but also because of the Trayvon Mullen surgery that's going down on Tuesday. Anthony Morales, pit decline, Bush, fifth-year option. Should the Raiders look to trade for him? I'm going to say no, and the Pittsburgh Steelers have always been a very good organization, especially at the linebacking position. Is Devin Bush a good sideline-to-sideline -side player? Yes, he did lose a step, though, after his ACL injury, which I believe came in 2019 or 20. I think it was 2019 or 2020. Regardless, though, ever since Bush first came out of Michigan, I love that he was a really speedy linebacker. Was he a little bit undersized? Yes. However, if the Raiders wanted to use Devin Bush or wanted to go out and get Bush, I would be more interested in trying to do that exact same role for Jonathan Abram because... Devin's only a little bit bigger than Abram, and I've been saying for a while, if you're going to try to get something out of jo or Jonathan, put him in the box or make him a linebacker. Let's go to Brandon Vaughn. What's up, brother? Signing Darrell Williams, most important move of free agency left. Agree or disagree? I agree. Brandon Parker, Jermaine Illuminor, been watching you for years. Love you, Mitch. If I had to pick which guy I have more confidence in, I would actually go ahead and say Brandon Parker at tackle, Jermaine Illuminor at guard. Second super chat from Brandon. You a real one. We need linebackers bad. Who should we look to sign? UDFA or vet? Appreciate you, Mitch. You're the best. Hope to meet you one day. Well, I'm actually hoping to go out to Sacramento to meet up with Raider Ron at the end of May. So if anybody lives near that area, I'll be telling y'all where we're going. We can all hang out. So I appreciate that you watch the show. The number one linebacker that I want the Raiders squad to get is still Kyle Van Noy. I also think Jamie Collins makes a little bit of sense as well. Those would be my top two players, and you can go out and get UDFAs. They're great and all, but UDFAs still do not equal, I think, what a veteran presence would on the defensive side of the football. Delane Trumpet, since you don't think Jacobs gets traded, you're right, Josh is not getting traded this year, which big-name player has the biggest chance of getting traded? Thanks. I'll say that there's there's two names that come to my mind. Number one, Trayvon Mullen. The issue is I don't know anyone who's going to trade for Trayvon at this current moment because he's literally getting surgery right now on Tuesday as I'm making this video. On top of that, I'll also go out and say Jonathan Abram because the Raiders like Deron Harmon. They also re-signed Roderick Teamer. They also re-signed Dalen Levitt on top of that. And I've heard that they like Tyree Gillespie, so it puts you in this awkward situation of what do you do with Abram? Abram, fifth-year option, got declined. Maybe a team's willing to go ahead and give you a six-round pick for Jonathan Abram. Maybe a team would be willing to give you a fifth or a sixth-rounder for Trayvon Mullen. So, all right, I like where Sam's thinking here. Which Raiders player is the most likely to get traded? So if you guys are going to ask me the question, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask you the exact same freaking thing. So which Raiders player on the roster right now is the most likely to get traded? Go down to the comments section and let me know. Cole Cook, Super Chat time. Where in the pick of Dave Ziegler on the phone during the draft or thumbnail a couple of days ago from haven't seen any draft call vids? Well, I got it off the internet. Like, that's just me. I'm, I put the fireball on him, if that's what you're asking. But, uh, no, I saw a picture. There's this really cool place cool called Google. I typed in Dave Ziegler, and then he was just drinking some water. It might not even have been from the draft. I don't know. Where. It's just th that's where it's from. L.I. Raider 312, outside of Bradbury, any surprise signings you can see? Surprise signings that I could see? I mean, the way that this Raiders organization has gone is they've been very patient, which I can respect. And if they do make a big-time splash, I think it's after June 1st, which I've said uh, definitely a few times here on the Raiders report. In terms of some other names, they're sticking with guys that they know. So I would say Donta Hightower could be an interesting name. Landon Collins would be an interesting name to me. Kyle Van Noy could be intriguing. Obviously, I would love for them to go out and get Daryl Williams. A wide receiver to keep in mind could be Cole Beasley. But uh, those are just a few random ones off the top of my head. Let's go to Ray Holman. Getting my six-year-old son's room done 
and he said he just wants Raiders gear everywhere, starting with him young, and he can get a shout-out. Madden Cordera, did I pronounce that right? Madden, Madden Sadar? Serta? All right, hey, I, uh, guys, I'm not, not the best with names, which I'm sure you've seen from this point. Ray, hopefully I'm even pronouncing your name correctly. Well, if he's doing anything Raiders-related... If you want to sign a Raiders report something, I might be able to figure something like that. If your son's like, no, I don't want that whatsoever, I don't blame him whatsoever. But uh, good job starting him young, womb to the tomb. I'm all about it. All right, y'all, so remember, if you ever have a question that you want to see featured on the shows, make sure you subscribe, make sure you join our live shows, which, when as soon as we go live, I mean... If you don't have those notifications on, you might not ever know that we even go live. So there's literally a bell underneath the video. You click that, you click all, and then when I go live, it pops up on your phone, and then you can join the live shows. That's how you see these mailbag questions being answered. And if you have any other questions whatsoever, remember, you can always ask me in the YouTube comments. I try to go ahead and check those out on a weekly basis. All right, another super chat coming in from Brandon. And, uh, Illuminor is better than Leatherwood. I think it depends. Uh, Jermaine Illuminor at times last season did show that he was a better option. And I also think that Illuminor, will say, has more connections with the Patriots staff that's coming in. But the words money talks, I think definitely speaks volumes here. The Raiders coaching staff in right now gave Alex Leather, or yeah, no, gave Brandon Parker, let's say 2.5. And they only gave Illuminor, let's say, 1. I do not think that Leatherwood is better than Jermaine Illuminor at this current moment. However, you know that you got to try to get something out of Leatherwood. Like, Alex Leatherwood's upside is much higher than Jermaine Illuminor. But, yeah, I'm not totally against the idea of I might have more confidence right now in Illuminor at right guard than Leatherwood. However, I want to see what Leatherwood can do. And for that, I'll put him out there. Let's go to Daniel Guerrero. Harrison Graham has the Raiders going 9-8. and eight. I mean, that, that's, that's Harrison's opinion. I said just a few days ago I had the Raiders going 10-7, and seven, so we're not t that totally off. I think the Raiders are a very good team, but you're in a very tough division, and you're in the AFC. The AFC is going to beat the crap out of each other. Like, you got two tough games against the Chiefs. You got two tough games against the Chargers, two tough games against the Broncos. You could easily split those, and then... You have other tough matchups, and the Raiders are going to win some games they shouldn't, and they're going to lose some games that you shouldn't. I see this team as being 10 and 7. I hope that they can go 11 and 6, and I hope that they can surprise me. And that's probably good enough for the AFC this season to make the playoffs. Now, if you haven't already, y'all, join the Raiders Report over on Locals. How do you do it? You can go to the link RaidersReport.locals.com, and you're like, Mitch. What kind of content am I going to find over there? You're just going to find more draft analysis, more free agency, all that good stuff. And if you're like, I don't want to go to that link down there below, cool. I got a QR code now. Scan the QR code, become a member. You can become a member for free, which you still get content as a member, but you only get like a tip of the iceberg. Like imagine you want something and there's 100% of something. Being a normal member, you get like, 10 15 percent if you become a local supporter that's when you go ahead and you get everything else like Raiders and chill after the 2022 NFL draft this was a free video for all members however if you're a supporter then you could have gone ahead and you could have saw this video Raiders 2022 UDFA grades I know I'll make you guys a lot of content over here on YouTube but I got a commitment to excellence, not only to the Raiders, but also to Raider Nation. So if you want extra videos, go ahead, join us, Raidersport.locals.com. Super Chat, Garrett Sproul, Eagles got the steal of the UDFA round, Carson Strong. If you were to ask me which player could probably be flipped for the most in the future, it wouldn't surprise me if the answer was strong. And a lot of times that's why I like taking dart throws on quarterbacks. The issue is, I don't like the quarterback that the Raiders took a dart throw on as their UDFA. My Vibe Raider. I'll drink to that. That's a hell of an A. Mitch, love the show. <laughs> that is uh, that is an elite name. Everyone down in the comments section, grade that name. Honestly, it probably should get a D, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. My Vibe Raider. That's, that's amazing. Let's go to Rollful. <laughs> Do you think... Super Chat coming in from Javier Tello. What up, brother? Any chance any of the rookies starting on the offensive line? I, I think it's Dylan Parham. 
and he's the guy who the Raiders draft in round three, pick number 90 out of Memphis. I see him being the starting center for the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, Taylor Munford is another very sneaky name to keep in mind, the offensive lineman out of Ohio State. I had him as my number 153rd overall ranked prospect, so somewhere in the middle of round five, essentially. Raiders got him in round seven. He's not quite ready to start yet, but could potentially be a name to keep in mind. I do see Parham starting the week one. Super Chat coming in from Ray. Would love to get him something like that. Hashtag nation, hashtag womb to the tomb. All right, Ray. So what I need you to do then is maybe go down in the comments, put in like your Instagram handle or send me a DM at Mitchell Renz 365. That way I can get a, a shipping address or something like that and I'll, and I'll sign something or I'll take a picture and I'll try to get you something. That way you guys can uh, make your son's room a little bit more Raider-esque. So remember, guys, we get a lot of questions here during our live show. Shit, we got 950 people watching right now, and I've never waited in a line of 950 people. At least I don't remember I have. It takes me back to my days when I was a kid going to Knoebels, and if you don't know what Knoebels is, it's the world's largest free amusement park about 10 minutes away from my hometown, so shout out to Knoebels. But I also remember, you know, Six Flags. I remember waiting on all these crazy lines. Essentially where I'm going with this is don't wait in those lines. DM me your questions on Locals because I'll get to them a lot quicker. Daniel Kena, what up, dog? <clears throat> All I have to say is James Yoder needs a shot. Bam, you're roasted. <laughs> so when we were doing our live NFL draft coverage, James was doing the whole thing from the office. Boom, you're roasted. Boom, you're roasted. Or boom, roasted. That's what we were doing, and then James was roasting a whole bunch of Raider fans, and Daniel already sent in one. I mean, if James wants to come in and take a shot, I'm not drinking this week, and I hopefully you guys can understand that. I am not drinking this week because of the amount Chugs and I drank last week for the draft. What up, Rev Matty? Everyone is talking about Jacobs losing his job. What about Kenyon Drake? Why is he safe? Well, I think Zamir White is a lot closer to the style of running back that Josh Jacobs is than Kenyon Drake. But how about this? You guys can go down to the comments right now. Let me know who's the better running back, Kenyon Drake or Zamir White. Type KD for Kenyon Drake or type ZW for Zamir White. The reason why that Drake's contract is still safe is because they've already restructured his deal. So essentially, if the Raiders cut Drake next season, they owe him $7.7 .7 million. And I just don't see why you would do that when Drake can help you out, not only in special teams, he's also a good pass-catching running back. If anything, the signing of Brandon Bolden impacted Kenyon Drake more than the signing or the drafting of Zamir White. Let's go to Andrew, but you know what, Daniel? You called out my boss, and he's here. Daniel is – I don't want that. No, I can't, dude. You can go ahead. I, I'm, I literally just said no shots. Sam's going to take a shot for me, which I'm glad. So Daniel Keenan says, all I have to say, I got to move over. All I have to say is James Yoder needs a shot. Bam, you're roasted. Right, cheers to Sam. Cheers yeah, to Sam. Else, is that Jack? Yeah, I think that's Jack. A little bit of Jack in your life. So Daniel, appreciate the super chat. Shout out to James Yoder for coming on, being a real one. Don't call me out for not taking shots this week. Hopefully you guys can understand. I'm, I'm detoxing this week. We're, we're on a big old detox here at the Raiders Report. Let's go to Andrew. You think we win the Super Bowl. Do I think it's possible? Yes, of course it's possible. The Cincinnati Bengals were 4-12 in 2020. They go ahead. They Sure, they lost the Super Bowl, but it shows that you can make a transformation. This Raiders team is better than what they were last season. It really comes down to... Are you playing the best football at the end of the year, which over the past three seasons, I don't know if I could 100% say that that's been the case. Yes, the Raiders went on a four-game winning streak last year, but Carr wasn't playing all that well. The defense is what stepped up. Josh started to play well. You need to be able to get that right mojo. Can they do it? Yes. Do I think it's going to happen? No, but that doesn't mean I haven't put $10 down on the Raiders to win the Super Bowl. I did it at plus 3,300 odds. Let's go to Javier Tello. Shout out to y'all putting in work always. Raiders! I appreciate the recognition. We do have a commitment to excellence, but we put in that work because you guys watch. You support. And when I say like the video, you do it. When I say subscribe, you guys do it. So as long as y'all have my back, I'm telling you this. I got yours too, and I'm going to continue to pump out that content. 